Hello, this is Les, and today we are going to degas some epoxy. Here we have the epoxy already mixed. This is actually the smallest amount of epoxy that my pumps will meter out. Um, we've already got this mixed together, so we're going to throw this into the vacuum. You'll notice there's a very, very small amount of epoxy in relation to the size of the container that we're, we're mixing it in. We'll stick this in the chamber, and we will vacuum it down. Turn the pump on. With any epoxy, you're going to have uh, a couple of times you're going to want to be concerned with. One is the pot life, and the second is the workable time. The workable time is the longer of the two, much longer of the two. Here you can see we're starting to, to bubble up here. The working time is the amount of the time the epoxy can actually move and uh, form around the whatever container you've placed it in, or be pulled into a mold, or part of a layup. The pot life is the amount of time the epoxy should sit, or the maximum time it should be allowed to sit in the mixing pot, this thing we have sitting here in the vacuum chamber. The pot life is much, much, much shorter. So for this particular epoxy, we have a working time of, I believe, almost an hour. Actually, I think over an hour. Um, let's give this a swirl and see if we can break some bubbles. There we go. Whereas the pot life is uh, on the order of 20 minutes, the reason for this is the curing of the epoxy creates heat. As the two parts of the epoxy combine to form longer and longer polymers, it releases heat. But the hotter the epoxy is, the faster the reaction occurs. So it becomes a self-feeding reaction. The heat from the curing speeds up the curing, which produces more heat. So ideally, what you would like to do is limit how the heat can build up. Well, if the epoxy is just sitting in a pot, it's not mixed with anything, it hasn't been put uh, mixed with um, a modifier, like if you were going to put a calcium carbonate or marble powder in here, or if you were going to put it as part of a, let's say, a carbon fiber layup, you're distributing the epoxy among, amongst something else that will not only um, absorb some of the heat, it will spread the epoxy out. When it's in the pot, you don't have this. You have the epoxy all nice together in one contiguous volume, and it will feed on itself for the heat. Uh, in fact, most of the time, even with small amounts of epoxy like this, when you're mixing it, you can feel that the container is, is warmer than, uh, than it should be, than the air temperature around you. And that is because the epoxy is curing and it's producing that heat. So once you, as soon as you mix, put the two parts together, uh, and before you even start mixing, as soon as they come into contact with each other, you're on a, on a countdown timer, and you want to get the, um, the epoxy as thoroughly mixed as possible uh, before you stick it in the vacuum chamber to degas it. Um, afterwards, you just have the pot life. So we can't vacuum this forever. Uh, if we did, the epoxy would actually cure on us inside the chamber, which would not be good. But here you can see, especially earlier, how much extra volume. You can see on the edge of the container how high the bubbles got with this tiny, tiny, tiny amount of epoxy. Ideally, when you're mixing epoxy, you would like to do it in the largest container, largest feasible container you can. The larger the diameter of the container, the better. Uh, it helps you uh, spread the epoxy out over a larger area and prevents some of that heating inside the pot that you would really like to avoid. Removing gases from anything, you'll never get all of the gas out. You will approach uh, a value of degassing, and that's the best you can really hope for. Most likely, you'll be limited by your pot life, and you'll be watching the clock to make sure you don't run over it. But here you can see we're, we're producing much, much fewer bubbles than we were originally. Give this another swirl. But we are still producing bubbles. This is fine. We'll see when we sh actually shut off the vacuum and reintroduce atmospheric air these bubbles really aren't going to be that big of a concern. All the bubbles you see now are only bubbles because the pressure inside the chamber is so low. As the pressure in the chamber decreases, uh, bubbles form. It keeps going, uh, pressure goes down and down and down and down. So the bubbles we're seeing now 
they're very, very, very low pressure bubbles. They contain very little air. So when atmospheric pressure is reintroduced, they're going to be effectively crushed and squished down very, very tiny. You won't even be able to see them. It's, it's actually a fairly extraordinary change. We get so used to in We see it bubbling. It is not boiling. There is no phase change occurring here. We're not actually converting uh, water to steam or anything like that. There's no water present in this epoxy. We are seeing the air that had been mixed in when we mixed the two parts together escaping. So here we are. We've been drawing a vacuum on this particular epoxy mix for about 10 minutes now. Um, there's still bubbles. They're not coming out nearly as fast as they were before, but we do have some. So now we're going to shut off the pump, and we're going to slowly reintroduce air back into this chamber. Pay special attention to the, the, the foamy bits, the bubbly things that you see around the container and on the stir stick itself once we reintroduce air. Shut the pump off. And yeah, you can see that they've, they've dissipated significantly already. And let's open up the chamber. A little bit too fast there. And we're done. So we'll take the lid off here. Once you've degassed something, you want to be careful not to disturb it too much, otherwise you will reintroduce all the gases that you just worked so hard to get rid of. So here now we can see that we have basically, get the stir stick out of the way, we can see basically no air inclusions of any kind inside of our mix. If we would want to modify the epoxy with something, we would have done so prior to actually sticking it in the, uh, in the chamber. We would have mixed the two parts of the epoxy first. Then we would have mixed the uh, modifier in afterwards. You always want to make sure that your part A and part B are mixed thoroughly before anything else g gets into the mix. The main reason epoxies will fail is they haven't cured correctly because they either haven't been mixed thoroughly or they haven't been mixed in the correct ratios. I actually have a set of, most of the time you would do this with uh, mass, you would weigh the epoxy. I actually have a set of metered pumps that will meter out the epoxy correctly for me. And that's basically it. Uh, let me know if there are questions.